Meet the Matthewsons. They're a dynasty of dealers. It drives really well. With a love of classics. Ah, it's only condensation. Yeah. In Thornton the Dale, gateway to the North York Moors, they auction over 2,000 rare vehicles every year. 42,000 the ready type, the stunning car. All walks of life, the cars fetch people together. I'm ecstatic. Head of the family, Derek. It's got to be the best job ever, isn't it? We're sort of living a dream. Trusted lieutenants, sons Paul. Not everybody's cup of tea. And Dave. There's Dad's way. And there's Dad's way. <laughs> Keeping them all in check and dealing with the punters, Sarah. Somebody could ring today with some fabulous vehicle that's been sat in a barn for 50 years. You have no clue. It's the chase, it's fine then. So you get up every morning thinking, what am I going to find today? This is a family's love affair with cars that have lived a life. Someone's cherished a car and loved it, and I think it's just great. I think it's absolutely superb. A passion that can be turned into brass. sale this week. One of the stars of the show, 1970 E-Type, Series 2. Just a lovely car. Everywhere you go, everybody appreciates it. They've just evolved from purebred racing. Now, Van der Plaar, Princess, 1963. It's a beast, isn't it? Very wide. When they're all kitted up and they're all nicely ribboned up, a bride, well, they just write their checkbooks out. It's generally how it goes. 1985 Escort RS Turbo. Iconic 80s fast forward. Everyone wanted one. Not everyone had one. Foot warmer. Do you like tat like that? Yeah. <laughs> he gave me a Mr. Drip. Appropriate, I don't know. When I was 16, we were at Sheffield and it was just a cobble back street, like imagine all steelworks, one with park there. And I just said to myself, I'm gonna have one of them one day. On a Pennine hillside, tell Snape is saying goodbye to an old friend, an E-type Jaguar. We may have so worked at pay, a miners trainee pay was 14 pounds. I started steel erecting and I was taking home £240 per week, so I could afford an E-Type. But this love affair is at a crossroads. Wife's fed up of sitting in a field and me polishing car, so she wants a motor home or we're going to have a look at a place abroad. Tell makes the call. Good morning, Matthewsons. One of Britain's most iconic sports cars is now on the market. Brilliant. Nobody's ever seen Derek move so quick. And I'm sure it will generate a lot of interest. It's the right colour, it's a selling colour. Bright red. Everybody loves them. Everybody wants one. But before Derek arrives, one last drive. It's a need for speed. <laughs> There's no computers, no traction control, no ABS. But just a lovely car. Everywhere you go, everybody appreciates it. They've just evolved from purebred racing. Derek's going to be assessing the Jag, but he's also here to see Tell's late 50s Triumph Speed Twin in amaranth red. Here he is. Now then. You OK then, mate? All right, good Derek. to see you, good yeah. to see you. Yeah, car looks good. Yeah, looking good. Smashing job, yeah, ideal. And the bike, speed twin. Yep. Yep, nice. First kick. Sounds sweet, doesn't it? Yeah. Sits well. Very nice, yeah. Very nice. 
Yeah, it's the original one, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Oh, he's smashing. Got the original knack knacker catcher. Oh. On there. <laughs> and when you go over the top. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> just James, you always back break. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, the E type. They're hard to value. Yeah, well, that's right. Colour right, everything, isn't it? Really, it's, um, it's nice. Yeah, bonny thing. Yeah. Slightly wrong shade for my liking, but it's still very nice. They're more of a sports car limo, aren't they, really, yeah. than anything? So I suppose you might as well have auto, but unfortunately, most people seem to think they want manual, don't they? Oh, it's yeah. Not they a bit right, but are we going to open the old bonnet up? Yeah. Have a look. I've got it. Yeah. Clean under there, isn't it? It's just a real smart, good 2 plus 2, isn't it? It is. It's exactly what it is. A usable car, yeah. I'd say. Yeah, you can have more fun out of one like that than you yeah. can a Concours one, because you're scared to park it, aren't you? <laughs> Launched in 1961, built in Coventry, Enzo Ferrari called it the most beautiful car ever made. With a top speed of 150 miles an hour, Jaguar said it was the fastest production car in the world. Not to 60 in sub seven seconds. Stopping it was the problem until they sorted the brakes out. Not bad for a car that cost just over 2,000 pounds when it was launched. Yeah, she's all right, mate, isn't she? Yeah, what are we putting on it? Uh, 50 grand. Yeah. Well, we've got to try, haven't we? As I say, I've had it long enough, so I just hope somebody mm. else they do enjoy it. So, a 50 grand reserve is high, but this is a lot of car. Refined British beauty, just like these two. You know, it's price range, isn't it, really? Yeah, it, it is. It's, I mean, to you and I, it probably seems a fair bit of money, but it's E-type money now, isn't it? It and is, yeah. Not much you can do about that, is there, really? It's a fine line, though. Derek wants to get the best price for Tell, but put it into the auction too high, and buyers might take their money elsewhere. Thanks for the deal, Tell. Yep. Lovely. Just a right. job, mate. Look forward to seeing you. Yeah. A five grand reserve was agreed for the Speed Twin, and if both vehicles sell, Tell should be able to afford that motorhome. But saying goodbye to his adolescent crush hasn't been easy. It's been a big part of my life. Yeah, I, I do feel sad now it has gone. It, it's like, I didn't think I would feel like this, but as I say, it's, uh, it's gone. Back in Thornton Le Dale, a fresh delivery of automotive memorabilia is about to arrive. We have our regular memorabilia family. One of my favourites, obviously, is, is Perry. Mm -hmm. That's a champion, aren't you? In his van full of treasure, there's always a special gift for Sarah. He gave me a Mr Drip to remember him, because this is what this guy's called, Mr Drip. So, whether or not Perry thinks it's that appropriate, I don't know. We need guys like Perry. Yeah, he finds everything. Wherever everything is, he knows where everything is. He homes in on things, don't you, mate? Lovely. Very, very nice. Now, what we're supposed to say now is that that's just as I like it, with the rust and all the rest of it, which is an absolute load of <laughs> What it ought to be is in lovely condition without the rust, and everyone would like it. Well, that's nice. Yeah, yeah that's nice. Someone was saying they, uh, they, they, wipe, they wipe them over with baby oil. You like Absolutely. that, don't you, Derek? Baby oil? Baby. We love it, don't we? Yeah, yeah. Oh, God, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, lovely. Late 50s, probably early 50s, I would have said. Ah, well, even better. Oh, that's nice. That's nice, yeah, that. That's nice. That is superb. Absolutely lovely. Man cave signs like these can go for big money. There's probably £2,000 worth right here. I bet he's going in, my love. Yes, of course they are, yes. Oh, yeah. Do you wear these on a weekend? I do, yeah. Perry, we could get dressed up this evening and nick a few people. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Perry's excelling himself today. A French mobilette scooter from 1959. Good ones can go for more than a grand. There you go, down the juice. What's change of juice? Yeah, it's fantastic. She's lovely, isn't she? Good nick. 
Yeah, it looks the right original little thing. Look at the seat where they repaired the seat. Absolutely brilliant. It caused a lot of interest, that one. Yeah, really, yeah. Real saleable, that. I'm pleased with that. Yeah. We'll find out later if Perry's heavy metal is gem or junk. It's getting close to hammer time for this lot of auction-bound beauties, and there's much love for Tell's Red 4.2 Coupe. Red is for an E-Type, red is for a Ferrari. That's just my opinion. The guest houses and B&Bs around the village are now fully booked, thanks to the auction. Now then, mate, you're all right. Morning, Jenny. Nice to see you. And you, yeah, ah, you yeah, had a yeah, fair yeah. old trip up, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. yeah. With over 100 cars for sale, Many enthusiasts just come for a nostalgic nosy. You just could look at these cars all day. Fuel injection, alternator. But others are on a mission. Ugh. Restorer Brian Johnson is on the hunt for an E-Type for a discerning client. He could buy himself a new Porsche Boxster for the price of this one, and it wouldn't need any restoring. But where's the fun in that? It's a nice car. It's had obviously a lot of work over, over years. So a lot of stuff wants starting out on it. It wants a full strip down and start again. The other problem is it has some stiff competition. Fresh in from Scotland. A very collectible 1966 Series 1. First impressions, when I pulled up outside the chap's house and saw the car, I thought, good colour. Nice wheels, E-types have chrome wire wheels, Aston Martins have chrome wire wheels. Uh, Jensen's arguably have chrome wire wheels. Everything else, in my opinion, should have painted, but they're, they're totally right. Interior, very, very nice. Not, not renewed, original. Nice patina to it. A little bit of colouring and cleaning would be required. Nice steering wheel, decent dashboard, and quite nice straight panels. That's what I like about it. Straight roof. Hasn't been on its roof, you can see. It's very, very good. The panels themselves are very, very straight. Even the bonnet, which is not known to be a particularly good panel, there's always a little bit of waviness on them. But two new wheels, 300 quid each. Those two are perfect. You're fine. Put the best one back in the spare. Job done. Two E-types in one auction. And there isn't much between them. It's auction day at Matthewson's. Got a really good feel about it this morning, it's nice and busy. And Derek's wheeling out an essential tool of the trade, lovingly carved out of finest old Morris Travellers. Marvellous old thing. And so we've got to be a bit careful when I get carried away because it's falling, a bit, falling apart a bit here and I get splinters. This is when they earn their commission. We're full. Uh, no more space in the inn. There's a bit of something for everyone, I think. People are saying that uh, there's a good entry interested uh, different generations and things, so hopefully it'll be a good day. Give me another one, because I don't know where the perp work is for that yet. There's that very particular auction house tension in the air. If all the paperwork's not in place, then it won't run smoothly. Tell and his wife Sandy are here to see the Jag and the Triumph bike go under the hammer. And I do feel a bit nervous now, where I never did before. This is the first time I've thought about it, so... You just have to see. 1959 Triumph 500 Speed Twin, beautiful machine. So, there it is, super, super machine. Now I picked that vehicle up, and it's not often I can say this, but this is absolutely true. That bike started first kick, in fact, half a kick, and it was away. Absolutely superb, a lovely, lovely machine. Right, where are we going to be? I've got some bids here. 4,000 pound, four, 4,001. You're in ballpark. 4,600 for the first. 4-6 for the second. Third and last time, you know, 4,600. There is interest, but it's still £400 short of reserve. One of the stars of the show, 1970 E-Type, Series 2, in red. I just wondered how market to be with another E-Type being here at the same time. Super thing. Where are you going to be? Start me on that. People with that type of money might only be able to afford one. Whereabouts? 30, 35, 35, 35, 35,000, 36, 37, 38, 39, 39,000, 40, 41, 41,000, 41,000, 41,5, 41,5, 42, 
42,000 the ready type, the stunning car, 42. We all know what they're making, 42,000, very provisional, 42. 8,000 short of its reserve. It's not enough. No. Well, you haven't got any space in your garage, though. We'll find it somewhere, don't worry. <laughs> Next up, the competition. 1966 E Type Series 1, white one. Lovely, lovely car. Start me on that. We've got some interest here on the books. We're going to be 30, 30, 30,000, 32, 34, 36, 38, 38, 38, 40,000, 40,000 pound, 41,000 seated, 41, 42, 42,000, 43. On the phone, 43. Provisional, 43. On behalf of his client, Harrogate Car Restorer Brian was the highest bidder. But at 43,000, he too was a couple of grand short of the reserve. He wants it. Yeah, he does. He thought we'd won it at 43. But, but um, no, he's, he understands. He's a businessman. I'll hope we take 43 for it. But if not, we'll have to see if we can take a bit more and see if we have to give him a bit more. Probably put another 10 on that. There's haggling technique involved here. Bailing early in the auction can result in getting a good deal when the party's over. Put bid on the white E type, and it's, it, and it's not met its reserve as such. Okay. I'll meet his, meet his reserve if it needs to be. Yeah. You've got to go yeah. to the Yeah, if it needs to be. Okay. We've got like a bargain. A few calls later, and that deal has been struck. It's the start of a new chapter for poor girl. <laughs> Brian's client has had a ride over to check out his E type. Well, I'm, I'm going to drive it. I'll try it as it is and then decide on what's the, the, the best, the amount of work that needs to be done and maybe by next year it'll be on the road and gleaming new, I suppose. So the older model has won the catfight, but Tell's purring 60s icon will return to the auction as he holds out for more money. The happy day has finally arrived for the Matthewson family. It's all eyes on the white Austin princess Vanden Pla as she glides up to the next best thing to a chapel. Has it still got the bride in it? <laughs> no, no, it is empty. It's quite heavy. Austin's flagship motor started life in 1947 at Longbridge in Birmingham. But the luxury Vanden Pla range was handcrafted in North London. The chosen vehicle of British ambassadors, optional extras included mohair rugs, a decanter, a monogram, and a flagstaff. However, time was finally called in 1968, and the princess's 31 year reign came to an end. Not everybody's cup of tea. <laughs> they're, uh, they're big and clumsy. Uh, arguably, um, perfect wedding car, really. You know, loads and loads of room in the back. Uh, could nearly have a party in the back of there. Wedding cars of this age and quality are rare. And driving brides can be a fickle business. People go in phases with it, you know, they think it's a really good idea, which it is, really, you know. It, it, um, people do make a career of it, of course. Uh, but um, th there's a lot more pressure than people actually realise. Uh, so, um, so consequently, um, you get quite a bit of um, repeat uh, and, and turn round with wedding cars. People think it's an easy job, and, and it actually isn't, you know. Yeah, steady on. A little bit of left. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit of right, actually. No, not much. Leave it here. Yeah. All right, oh. It's a beast, isn't it? Look at this, full seven seats. Got the old four litre straight six, like a Austin Champ, basically a lorry engine, like a, 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 an Austin K2 lorry engine in that. Four litre, great heavy numb thing. There's someone for everything. So someone might have themselves a almost ready-made wedding car business. Hat there and everything's all ready for it, look. Just a job. Good afternoon, Matthewsons. There's never a shortage of beautiful classic cars hanging around the Matthewson's garage, waiting for a new home. 
people like to buy cars they can relate to, whether it's their early motoring career or more importantly their dad's motoring career. Uh, my dad had a lovely A55 Cambridge I remember which was a, a really modern car as far as I was concerned in its day, 1958 and then I wound up owning it for a year, 18 months, and then he had it back. And if the car came on the market now, VXO 677, I would have to buy it. It's one of them things, isn't it, really? It's, yeah, it's strange. We're, we're odd like that, aren't we? Of course, someone might also want a classic car, purely for business. Jason Sagarde from Shropshire runs a wedding car company. This is probably one of the top five wedding cars that go out and that have always gone out for years and years. I'm hoping to buy that really cheap, which is within its estimate value. So if I can get it for five, five and a half, six, I'd be happy to spend two on it, two and a half. When they're all kitted up and they're all nicely ribboned up, a bride, well, they'll just write their checkbooks out. It's generally how it goes. As the crowds gather for the auction, We'll find out soon if the princess gets the honeymoon in Shropshire or whether she'll be jilted at the altar. It's the day of the auction and there's much chin scratching as prospective buyers weigh up the cars. It's been very well maintained. It's a very, very nice car. Businessman Jason Sigarde is keen to nab the 1963 Vanden Pla Princess for his fleet of wedding cars. He spotted the owner, another Derek, and it turns out it's a match made in heaven. Might as well get rid of it. My son's getting married this year. We'll give the money to him, basically, to help him with his wedding. He's a nice dad, isn't he? Uh, Fair enough, though. I'll tell you what, though, Derek. Um, I'm getting married on the 8th of July. This will probably be the vehicle we use, so I'll right. send you some photos <laughs> of me getting married in this. So, yes. You've got time to change your mind. <laughs> I've been married 38 years. <laughs> uh, now, Van der Plaar, Princess, 1963. Lot number six we're doing, the, uh, the white one round the back, lovely car. A little bit of um, cosmetics to do, a little bit of touching up, tinkering. And uh, titivating, but she'll go to work. Perfect wedding car. Four, four thousand, four thousand pound. Four thousand, two fifty, four two fifty, four five, four thousand five, four thousand five hundred. Submitting it then. Four thousand five hundred, four thousand five hundred, four six, four thousand six. Standing down the middle. Four thousand six. Do you want seven? Four thousand six. We'll submit then. Four thousand six. Provisionally for the first. Provisionally for the second. Third and last time. Standing. Four thousand six hundred. Provisional only. 4-6, provisional. Jason's bid was the highest, but it didn't reach the owner's reserve. I mean, I paid 5,000 for it 20 years ago, so I'm not making a fortune in profit on it, that's a certain fact. But um, if it doesn't sell, we'll just take it back to our workshop and uh, store it for another 20 years. <laughs> but Jason's not giving up. It is a nice car, it's potentially a nice car and it's the right colour and so yeah, I do want to make a deal and I want everybody to be happy at the same time rather than just... Yeah, what we're going to do is we'll obviously speak to him yeah. on your behalf, okay. so you just need to wait for us to do that. David's right. going to give him a call now. It's kind of like I said to him already in the hall and he's... I think he's, I think he's a bit, bl I think he's a bit like winded because he thought he'd go for a bit more. There was no okay. interest in that. So just a little, little bit of negotiation. It sometimes takes a few calls, for people to go forward and backwards. Um, sometimes they need to have a think overnight, so we might not get an answer today. We'll just have to wait and see. Every month, Matthewson's receive pile after pile of vintage magazines and reference books, which go into the auction alongside all the other bits of weird and wonderful memorabilia. Everyone has a go at keeping them in order, but today it's down to Derek and grandson Charlie. What we're going to do, we're going to sort out in sort of age and interest, if you know what I mean. The interesting things as far as a lot of people are concerned are things like these period books, you see? Yeah. Um, with lovely period maps before the motorways were on. And look at these lovely pictures and things like that. Good bedtime reading yeah yeah really really good so we shall um, we'll put some of these put them in with them 
Look at that. No, yeah. no, no motorways on there. Look, none at all. Absolutely wonderful. Yeah. So we've got some of these. So we'll we'll, so we'll keep them. Might as well go in with them. With, yeah. They? They're they're nice pier. Now these are lovely. Look, these really. These should be in schools. These and these should be part of the national curriculum, together with watching Norman Wisdom. Look at that. Absolutely superb. Look at that. Mark One Zephyr. Zodiac, I would imagine, being two-tone, and he's had his caravan done the same colour. And that's exactly what you've done in the 1950s and 60s. Yeah. Now then, you know what colour that is? Come on, Mark 8. Well, probably about Series 2, I think, that one. And there's a Riley 1.5 or a Woolsey. Yeah. Look there, can't that's quite an see. That's an A40. Yeah, A30. Come on, you're not with it today. A30, <laughs> that one. Then they've kept them really, really nicely, in really good order. Look at that, the condition of that. 1960, Superb. September, that yeah, one. 1960, yeah, 1960. 1958, November. But just, just, the, just the pictures, it's absolutely superb. Look at the work that's gone into, into putting that pictures together. It's absolutely brilliant. This is not computer generated, is it? This, is, this actually happened. You know, that guy was there, and I think it's great, don't you? Yeah. Lots and lots of work. Nice as they are, they're not easy to sell. A bundle of mags or a technical manual might only go for a few quid. Derek usually gives the proceeds to charity. So that's Charlie's job this afternoon. He's going to put them into groups and sections as he sees fit, and then I'll check them later on just to make sure that we haven't duplicated things. Um, and then we'll get them lotted up on display for anybody that comes in over the next few weeks prior to the auction. It's a busy job working at Matthewson's. So when Dave needs to relax, he goes to his workshop and spends some quality time with his own private collection of Fords. Mark II Cortina GT, two-door, uh, which is nice. Most of the Cortinas obviously were four-door. And it's as solid as a rock. It's really, really good. If I actually started that on Monday morning, there's no reason really why I shouldn't have that out by the end of the week, but I haven't got a spare full week to do it, so. We've got a Capri there, two litre S. He didn't really want to repaint, he just wanted bits and pieces. I haven't repainted the roof, but we've done down the sides. Then we'll start refitting it all back up again and making it look uh, just like a, like a nice, mature 20, thousand mile car so that'll, that'll turn into a nice car that actually and then the Escort originally an RS2000 so would have had a two litre Pinto in that but that's now running a 2.1 Duratec a modern engine in that so this has cost a, a small fortune to do there's still bits and pieces I want to improve upon which I will do Dave has enjoyed Raleigh's success in this impressive machine but Fords have been a lifelong obsession When I was 17, all I wanted was an XR3i because that was the car really to have. If you wanted something a little bit flash and a little bit quick, you went out and you bought something Ford and it would outperform stuff that was twice, three times its value. Dave is always on the lookout for Dagenham Dream machines. People knew what they were. You know, that there was a huge difference between visual and performance between the RS version and the GL version. Nowadays, one top-of-the-range car looks very much similar to like a, a mid-car. There's no big spoilers. You see a fast-forward of the 70s, 80s, 90s going down the road and you knew exactly what it was the minute you saw it. Now he's on a mission to get a couple of modern classics into the auction. But here's a surprise. The two on his radar are fast-forwards. First on the list for collection today, a Series 1 Escort RS Turbo. Iconic 80s fast forward. Yeah, everyone wanted one. Not everyone had one. Did you have one? Yeah. If you could, you got the RS Turbo. If you, if you couldn't quite reach that, you got the XR3i. They're a fast XR3i. At first glance, you'd be forgiven for thinking it's a bit of an ordinary 1985 Escort. But oh no, in its day, the RS Turbo was one of the fastest affordable cars you could get your hands on. The RS's turbocharged engine propelled it to 122 miles per hour. There were only 5,000 Series 1s made, and all of them were white, apart from one in black. A special order for Lady Di. It would have cost her around £10,000. One of these, with very few miles on the clock, recently sold for 60. Slightly larger intercooler, an induction kit. Owner and self-confessed ex-boy racer Eric 
has decided the time has come to opt for something more sedate. But he still has cherished memories of burning off his rivals at the lights. One guy in uh, Mitsubishi 4x4 stuck it right on my back end once and I just had to eventually show him a clean pair of wheels. Eric's hoping for around nine to 10,000 for his modern classic, but today, well, it's the end of an era for him. A bit sad, <laughs> but I get over it. We do become quite attached to them, don't we? And they become one of the family if you had them a long time, you know. One woman was quite hysterical when I picked up a minivan once. You just think, God, it'd be a lot easier just to take it back off the truck and say, see you later, thanks ever so much. Yeah, she was proper. Mm. Life goes on. The classic car market is shifting. It's much more than rare Aston Martins and Mint MGBs. Dave knows that cars like these fast Fords open up a younger market. It's bound to move on, isn't it? You know, it's a different generation coming on board and there's people coming in with disposable income into this bracket and consequently this is what they're looking at. The next owner of this RS will have to buy some cassette tapes to fully enter the 80s classic car experience. And for Eric, saying goodbye to his car may yet prove to be a sound investment. Dave's on a roll to pick up this highly tuned, but rather neglected, Series 2. The owner's not been well, so he's heading for the auction. The owner, he feels it's probably time he went to someone fresh, fresh, fresh pair of hands, fresh start, and uh, hopefully we'll do that, we'll find someone for it. The Series 2 RS Turbo, produced between 1986 and 1990, would normally be a bit less desirable than the Series 1 like Eric's. This one, though, has had a load of good work done on it. The list of modifications is tremendous. I'll have to read through it when I get back. I mean, you can see just by glancing through there, that upgraded brakes and the back. Yeah, and the, just by quick glance around, and the exhaust. A previous owner spent nine grand uprating the engine of this already quick car. As soon as it arrives back at the Matthewson's garage, there's a potential new owner taking an interest. Dave's son, Jack. Yeah, as you can tell, that'll um, clean up very nicely, I'm sure, with a bit of time and effort. It's had a lot of money spent on it, um, and I imagine it's running, uh, running some high power as well. This car is capable of getting to 60 miles an hour in less than five seconds. I think it's a smart car. I'd, I'd like to buy it myself, actually, and... It'd be a good project to do it. It'd certainly clean up very easily. And, uh, no, it's a nice thing. I like it. Combined, the two RS turbos could sell for around 20 grand at auction. We'll soon find out if these modern classics are powering their way to a good investment. It's hotting up for the hot hatches on their run up to the sale. Going back to the 80s, I've had the Mexico version, the Mark 1s, oh, absolutely loads. It's just an icon, aren't they, really? I think it's priced pretty cheap, that. Eric's here to pay a fond farewell to his beloved RS. Kiss it goodbye. <laughs> hey. Nineteen eighty-five Escort RS Turbo, six and a half, six and a half away, six five, six seven fifty, seven seven twenty-five, seven two fifty, seven five, seven five, seven seven fifty, eight eight thousand standing, eight one, eight one, eight two, eight two fifty, eight two fifty says eight three for the first, eight three for the second, eight thousand three, third and last time. You sure? Eight thousand three. I'm happy with everybody. It is very emotional and I've had it since 2005 and it becomes part of your life, you know. I've, like God knows how many hours laid underneath it, getting it right and making it run right. So you do get attached to it. But end of the day, it's a car. Let somebody else enjoy it now. David is the new owner. 
This will be the eighth fast Ford from the 80s that he's had. Ah, yeah, no, I'll, I'll get an immaculate, I'll do the little bits. It won't take much. Ah, he's nothing really, and I'll get it nice, and then me and the band, she's nine, she loves them and all, and we'll just go about on weekends and that. It's in excellent condition. No, it's, it's really nice. Couldn't get a much better one. The beefier RS Turbo is unlikely to recoup what's been spent on it. The previous owner but one undertook this as a project, spent £9,000 on the engine and about £25,000 on a full body restoration. We've all done it, we've done it, I've done it. It's very difficult to know when to stop. And then before you know where you are, you've just spent a fortune. When Dave picked up this rare collector's item, it was a sorry sight. Covered in leaves, seemingly forgotten. But there was a good reason why it had ended up like this. Uh, Esco RS Turbo. Another one, second one tonight. Owner Sean has asked Derek to accept the highest bid, whatever that might be. I bought it and then uh, not long after buying it, I got diagnosed with cancer and I didn't get the car put away properly and it just deteriorated on the drive, so it was like, um, I don't know, I, um, it was neglected, so I bought it, neglected it, and it, it, it has become more of a stress having it there. If the car sells, Sean and his family will use the money to have a long overdue holiday. Six thousand. One. Bidding six starts one. slowly. Six two, six three, six thousand three hundred. Submitting it. Six thousand three. Looks cheap. This. Six thousand three hundred. Submitting it. Six four, six five, five, six four. I've got six four, six four, six five. Got you. But after some people drop out, it's down to two. One seven thousand one hundred. A phone bidder. Right at the back. Seven thousand one hundred. And Doug a regular buyer, who Sean doesn't realise is standing right behind him. 50, 8150, 8150, Doug's a bit up. 8250, 8250, 83, 83, 8350, 84, 8004, 8450. The price slowly rises. What do you think, Doug? 98. Yeah, and continues to edge up. Are you out, Doug? Sure. <laughs> Ten two fifty, Doug. Ah. Ten thousand two hundred and fifty to the phone bidder. It's a great result. <laughs> I'm ecstatic because <laughs> I thought it was going to go for about five. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. Spend it on you. Yeah, we'll get Ruby a new push bike <laughs> to do a paper round on. <laughs> And the joy continues as the memorabilia gets snapped up. My partner's bought them, Jane, and uh, whether she's going to put it on tonight or not for me, I don't know, really, but... If it fits, I'll be uh, on duty this week. Mr and Mrs Plot. Foot warmer. Do you suffer from cold feet? No, I don't. <laughs> it's for ornamental value. Do you like a tap like that? Yeah. <laughs> Probably the most popular ride to work open of the 1950s, 60s. £500. £500. The mags and manuals that Charlie sorted out have helped to raise a few hundred for the local air ambulance. But the winners of this category were undoubtedly the enamel signs. It's uh, the Pratt sign, 134. Charlie's got it there. Sold 220. Well, these are the genuine Pratt's colours. About a year and a half ago, I bought a nice uh, Pratt's. Uh, Petrol pump made in uh, Springfield, Massachusetts. Back in the day, they used to sell petrol at, at the chemists. They just went to the chemist and bought bottles over the counter. It'll make our garage look nice inside. The garage is going to be dehumidified and possibly heated as well. This one went for 650 on its own. Total for the batch, 2,500 pounds. Tell Z-Type was put into the next auction, but didn't sell. It's gone back home. I would really hate just to keep low in reserve and then just get rid of it. It is worth 45, in my opinion. And if I don't get 45, I'll never sell it. I'll just keep it to one of the kids when they appreciate what it is. 
He did check out a few motorhomes though, and took a trip to France to see if he liked it. It were too rural. There's good news from County Durham though. Car dealer David and his daughter Ava have only had to do minimal tweaking to their Mark I Escort RS Turbo. Put the original radio in it, I've put a, an immobiliser on it, and had all the wiring for the fuel pump done. So it wasn't running perfect, and it, it seems okay now, spot on. Ava can't get enough of this car. Wait, where should you go, like? The Durham? Her favourite bit? The sound of an 80s turbo dump. Well, it's got a dump valve, hasn't it? Put the revs up a bit, and when you let the revs off, it just makes a loud noise, so she loves it. As for the Princess Van den Pla, Jason secured the deal after the auction. But then he had a big task ahead, getting it in shape for his own wedding. It has been chaotic. Let's just get it there and drive it as minimum as possible. That's all I want. Oh, look at that. Where were you sitting, guys? Girls in the It's a seatbelt. Yeah, put all them seats up there. Oh. Are you in? Mm. Does this lift back? Yeah, just pull it towards me. We're going to take a, a nice, steady drive. OK, ladies? Yeah, yeah, OK. okay. This is what made the most of the industry, you know, as good as what it is these days, you know. Old cars like this, the way they was built. Therefore, Jason, do you take Joe to be your lawful wedding wife? I do. The wedding did not make me nervous at all. At the back of my mind, it was the car, the car, is the car going to be all right, is the car. It was because I've been... How long have I been on it? Months. Months. And that's taken up all Every of my day. time. Joe set all of this up today. I did everything. All I did was the bloody car. 